Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a preview for one of our favorite games. This is Dice Throne Adventures, which is a brand new take on the Dice Throne series. It is a cooperative game that is fully compatible with both Season 1 and Season 2, which is remarkable because that was a competitive game. Yeah, absolutely. So you're taking that and you're turning it on its head a little bit. You're going to have to play the game a little bit differently to go through what is a dungeon crawl, an adventure with the other players that you're playing with. You're going to be able to share your cards with them, share your treasure with them along the way. It's very much a different way to play Dice Throne. It is cooperative and what you're going to be doing is going through four different adventures or campaigns. Each of these is going to have a randomized dungeon that's going to be comprised of a number of different tiles. And so each time that you play, it's going to be completely completely different. These tiles come in three different levels and on all the tiles there's going to be some kind of event that's going to happen that may introduce some treasure, it may introduce a monster that you have to fight, there are all kinds of different things. And again, those are going to be randomized by one of these scenario cards that you're going to get at the beginning. We've set up one already so you see what the dungeon layout may look like. Each of the players is going to be moving through this dungeon and trying to get to one of the mini bosses. This is one of the aspects of the game. So the narrative of the game is that the Mad King, who we saw in season one, has this dice throne tournament. And he has a lot of people that have tried to defeat him and not successfully done so. These are called the Fallen, and these are the mini bosses that you're going to be seeing through the game. We have one here called the Gunslinger, and then we have the Barbarian, which the Barbarian is actually the grandfather of the Barbarian from the original game. Yeah, there's really interesting stories behind each of these, and we recommend that you definitely check out the campaign and the updates for more about the story behind those, but they are not easy pushover bosses to go up against. They're going to be very tough and they're going to be gaining their strength throughout your crawl. So as you uncover their minions along the way, they're going to be adding to ultimately how much they're going to hurt you later on in the game. That's right. So there's also an aspect to this game that makes it a light legacy game as well because your decks are going to be able to be upgraded through the game. And those upgrades come in one of two different ways. There are cards that are going to upgrade the natural deck that you have. So there's cards that are better sixes or try try agains, which are very common for people that play Dice Throne. They're going to give you more abilities on those cards with a lesser CP cost. And you're going to be upgrading to this game. But one of the unique things in the game too is you're going to be finding equipment which is brand new to Dice Throne Adventures. Yeah, it's really exciting. So you'll be able, these will go into your deck just like any normal card. You'll, you'll draw them, you'll pay for them with your CP, but then they'll slot. You'll have two slots for equipment with your character. And the other really great thing is all of these loot are going to have generic card backs, so they can mix into your deck. You're not going to know that they're coming up. Or if you happen to sleeve, you can just sleeve them into the extra sleeves that you got when you bought those sleeves or right on top of the card. Like for instance, if it's a six it, you're just going to upgrade that right into the sleeve. So the equipment's really cool because when you get equipment, it's actually going to be used and stay in front of you permanently for that scenario, meaning that you can reuse it. Once you're done, it's going to go back in your deck to be able to be used for future scenarios in the game. Speaking of loot itself, let's talk about how you get loot. Loot comes in four different varieties. You have common all the way up to legendary, and these are the grades that you're going to find. Loot typically will be found on the tiles. There's tiles that are just going to give you natural loot. And there's also tiles that are going to make a minion appear. All of these minions are going to drop loot when you fight them. Before we get into the minions and the bosses themselves, let's get into what the loot means. Anytime you acquire loot, everybody at the table is going to roll a d20. This is shared loot, which is pretty cool. You're going to look at this loot table, which is really unique, and on it you're going to see all four of the different lines of loot that you can acquire. Everyone's going to announce the number that they get, and they're going to look at what treasure dropped. So if a level one treasure dropped, it may drop a token for somebody to allow them to have more combat strength in a future round. It may allow a player to draw a card or gain some CP. One of the cool things is it's also going to provide gold to the pool. So everybody is going to collectively gain that gold that they can use at the end of the scenario in order to go to the shopkeeper. One of the really cool things is at the very end of them, there are unique cards that can drop. These are cards that you are going to acquire face down in front of you. You can't look at them. And these are going to be able to be identified when you get out of the dungeon. So you may roll a 20 and get a legendary loot that has to stay face out in front of you. You can identify it through the shopkeeper and actually get that. So it's a really unique loot system. Yeah, and, and those are going to cost a little bit less. You're taking a gamble because you don't know what they are, but they are going to cost less than what you get from Rosella on her own. All right, so let's talk about the minions and then the bosses because these are one of the neat aspects within Dice Throne Adventures that is very, very different than the original competitive game. 
Some of the tiles are going to introduce some minions. And when you find a minion, it's going to tell you which one of the three levels that minion might be. Again, these come in green, blue, and then purple. When you find that minion, you're going to flip over one of the cards. And on the card, it's going to show you how many hit points that minion has. And then it's going to have possibly three different other things. One, it could have a first strike in the upper right hand corner of that picture. That means it's going to attack you before you get to attack it. Also, it's going to have some kind of dice that it needs to roll, possibly a passive ability that it gets no matter what, and then some defense down here. The unique thing is that they all have their own AI objective, and that's true for the minions and for the boss themselves. These are the dice that the player to your right are going to roll and trying to hit. So just like normal dice thrown, you're going to roll for the boss and you're going to get your three uh, opportunities to roll. So as you roll, you're going for whatever is showing in that AI objective and you're going to re-roll everything else that doesn't match it, starting with the lowest possible thing. So if it's a straight and you roll two, three, five, six, you keep the two, three, for instance. Each of these are going to be rolled by the player to your right as if they are playing a competitive game against you because you want to play it as the most challenging aspect for the group in general. If you're able to defeat that, you're going to get whatever loot is acquired on that card for everybody. So everyone's going to roll a d20, whether or not you're in that combat or not, which is really cool. If you're defeated and aren't able to do it in one round, that minion's going to stay on the table with all the damage on it, and then players can come back behind you and try to clean up. All this is going to be explained in our round one, too, so we invite you guys to go watch an actual gameplay element as we get through it. Let's talk about the bosses, because the objective for each of these is to actually find the fallen boss. In this level, it's actually hidden in one of these three tiles, and the fallen boss are really unique. The boss is going to come out, and all the CP that he's been gathering, which is hopefully not too much, but probably more than you'd like, is going to help him upgrade his board, and that's going to happen automatically. You're going to lay out the board just like when you normally upgrade, except he's going to buy all that at once, and you're just going to go through and burn through his entire deck. If he has the ability to upgrade, you spend the CP, and if he isn't able to upgrade, he can sell that for CP back, adding more for him to upgrade as you go through that deck. So very quickly, he's going to get very powerful and very difficult to fight. And remember, you're going to be going into these combats with a very limited number of hit points. We didn't discuss that. Hit points are going to be reduced depending upon the number of players and what the scenario asks for. So you're going to have to survive that entire dungeon with a limited number of hit points and the help from your friends. Remember, this is a cooperative game. You are using your cards to power your character, but also to help the other players at the table to survive to get to that boss and defeat it. One of the really neat things about this, though, it can be a grind. If you want to get to the boss and decide, hey, we're not ready, we're limited, and we have a lot of gold, let's just flee. And that is a very good strategy because you will retain all the gold that you've acquired, and then you can go directly to the shop in order to spend that gold. However, if you try to defeat the boss and you get defeated, you still get to retain all of the items that you've acquired, that scenario, but you will lose half of your gold. So again, make sure you guys check out our round one to see how the actual gameplay elements work, including the bosses, how they're introduced into the campaign, and how all the minions and combat takes place. Some other things we want to talk about, though, with Dice Throne Adventures. Some hidden elements, but first we're going to talk about reroll because I know you're super excited about this. I have been one of the people shouting from the rooftops that I'd really like to see a Season 1 remaster that matches Season 2, just for simply the pure aesthetic of it. It's not necessary, you don't need it, but they have listened to the fans. They've decided to go ahead and do, make that available for us for all the original six heroes, including my favorite Shadow Thief, which I have here in front of me. You can see is now on the die cut board. It's going to come with the game trays, the swirl dice, all the fun stuff that you've, know, you've come to love and expect from Roxley and Dice Throne. Very excited about that, but also, it's going to come in the new in the book box, very similar to what we saw in season two, including two more characters. One, which you might recognize from the season two Kickstarter as a print and play character, the Treant, and then a ninja, which again, not gonna complain about getting a ninja into my copy of Dice Throne. One of the other things I wanna talk about is the hidden elements hidden within the game. Now we don't wanna give away too much, but we know that once you beat the campaign, that's not it. So some people may say, well, once I'm done with the campaign, will I come back to the game? The answer is yes. Not only can you go back into the campaign with different characters and try it again, but there are hidden elements in the game that will make it more challenging when you fight the Mad King or go through those levels again. We don't want to give away too much because we want you guys to explore that, but just know that it's not a one and done with this. The final thing is the miniatures. 
which are brand new to Dice Throne. Yes, and if you watch our round one, you'll see us playing with them. These are a completely optional add-on, yeah. but I think it is just wonderful to see Manny's art come to life in a 3D miniature form. These are pre-painted. They look fantastic. It was a joy to play with them. You do not need them to play the game, of course. It's purely, again, just like season one, rerolled aesthetic. And I did forget to mention that uh, the season one, two extra characters, if you do want them, you will be able to get them in their own battle box. So guys, hopefully that gives you enough information about Dice Throne Adventures. There's a lot more information about this game. Again, go check out our round one because we will walk you through the game and teach you how to play it and what goes on from turn to turn, how all the interactions work and how loot and buying stuff works as well. Very, very excited for this game. We're so excited to see rerolled come out and we're excited to see a cooperative aspect and to make the game so compatible with all the previous versions of the game. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do. And we will catch you guys next time.